Okay, so I recently got a clamping kit for the CNC machine and I wanted to make a fixture plate for it so I could accurately put this fixture back on the machine and clamp material into the exact same position. So I decided to do this with a IKEA cutting board which is made of bamboo and the bamboo is pretty stable material and pretty strong. Um, I could have also chosen to do this with something like a HDPE which is the plastic kitchen board, which um, arguably would be better because it's uh, not affected by water. Maybe I'll make one of those at a later stage, but this is what I did for now. I'm just going to take you through what I did in Fusion 360, the tool pass, and then we'll actually move over to the machine and you'll watch it being um, cut out and installed. I'm just going to play you through the timeline of what I did here to mock this up. I just uh, created the table of the machine um, and then I created the slats and then I created the part on top of it. So this is what it looked like. I'm not going to go through it all now. If you guys are interested in seeing uh, more lessons on Fusion 360 and how things are actually done step by step, please let me know in the comments and I will make some videos like that. Okay, so we're stepping through, creating the slats, creating the board, is the MDF spoil board and then it's moved into position. Now we're going to jump into CAM, go you know, to design manufacture. Because we've played through the timeline we're going to have to regenerate all our toolpaths. So uh, the, a quick way of doing that is the um, command G because I'm on a Mac or control G on the PC and that will regenerate all of them. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. The first thing we're going to do is place a, our board on the machine and stick it down. I'm going to be using the super glue tape method, painter's tape method for all of these operations, which involves um, painter's tape stuck onto the MDF spool board and painter's tape stuck onto the bottom of the part in this case the cutting board with a layer of super glue in between the two and you spray activator on the one uh, part and as you push it down it instantly sets and that's one of the most reliable methods for fixturing or holding a part down. Let's go into this setup and because this part is, we're going to start on the bottom of the part um, it's actually going to be flipped so I'm going to switch off so we don't get confused I'm going to switch off the bed extrusions and the slats and then I am going to move this into the cutting position so picture that as the IKEA board the rough stock stuck down to the table we've made our um, X Y and Z a zero um, right here in the bottom left hand corner of the part the first op is going to contour around the part essentially cut it out and then the second op is going to pocket out this material so when we flip it we can actually click it into place right on the edge of the MDF spore board so it will be self-locating against these edges all right so let's just quickly have a look at what that looks like going to our simulation let's do this very quickly it's nothing complicated here using a four millimeter end mole and um, cutting it out and now we are going to be pocketing the material out we, we of course could be a lot more aggressive with these cuts this is a four mil end mill and um, because it's a once off part there's no there's no uh, drastic need for speed and I also find that when making fixtures it's good to do it a little bit more conservatively because you don't want your tool but deflecting and um, affecting the accuracy of the cuts so uh, sometimes slower is better in these situations okay uh, then we're going to move on to the next setup I'm going to switch the bed and the slats back on you see we're looking at it upside down currently it's going to reorientate it correctly and now what we've done of course is we flip the part we've taken it off the board we have flipped it and then we have um, stuck it back down right on the edge orientated against the, uh, the edge of the MDF as you can see here and we've stuck it back down with our super glue method 
And now once it's in place, we're going to um, be moving on to our two boring operations. I always feel weird saying that because it sounds kind of boring. Then after that's done, we're going to be doing a contra once a part is actually fixed to make sure it's square to the machine. So let's just go through that. Uh, I've set the opacity on this part and this part to 90% so we can actually look through it and watch uh, the the tool paths for the holes being made. I'm just going to zoom in like that. Um, let's see if this is a good location. Yeah, so that's that's fairly good. So the first op, we're going to come in, we're going to bore all the way down through the material into the MDF spore board underneath. And we're going to be, because we're going to be tapping this material, instead of making a six mil hole for our, our fastener, we're going to be making a, a 4.8 mil hole to tap. Um, and then once that's done, the next op is going to come in and it's going to widen that hole through the material. So, so the M6 bolt doesn't um, engage this material, just pulling it down into the tapped bit underneath, right? And then the last op I'll show you now. So let's let's simulate this so you can see what it's going to do. It's going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Um, okay, so there is our hole to be tapped all the way through. Now it's going to come back in and widen the hole for the bolt. Okay, at this point, we take this off the machine. We tap our holes. And then what I like to do, which is a very good trick if you're ever tapping MDF or any wood for that matter, is once you've tapped the holes and you've cleaned them out, you drop a drop of super glue down onto the threads, the tapped threads. Then you spray activator on each one so it instantly sets. Um, MDF is very absorbent, so the super glue will absorb into the material surrounding the threads and make it very, very strong and very, very hard. Then you come back in and then you re-tap it slowly um, and then you have extremely, extremely strong holes in your MDF to thread into that won't break uh, easily and it will last a long time. So once we've reattached the part, so we're going to, once we've threaded, we're going and tapped, we're going to uh, use our M6 bolts and um, tighten it down, make sure that it's pushed right up against the MDF. And then we're going to come in with our very last op. We're going to uh, set our X, Y, and Z to this corner, making sure that the Z0 is the top of our MDF spore board. Yeah, so if we go into this, we'll see that in stock to leave, we are radially, which is on the side of the tool, we're taking off half a millimeter cutting into the machine into into the actual part and this ensures that like once we've we've bolted this down it might be slightly out of square to the machine and this will ensure that when the machine comes it's going to cut this part back square again to the machine that will ensure that um, any time you take the clamp off or you put it back on you can accurately re-square it up again Technically, it shouldn't be necessary because you are you do after all have six bolt positions or six fastening positions, so it should reorientate identically every time. But it's a, it's just a good best practice if you fussy about accuracy and repeatability to uh, square it up when you when you use it again. And another good thing to do in your tool path here when you're doing this kind of operation is to just make sure that you. On this tangential extension under the geometry that you put a little extension um, every time I move the mouse it moves out the way but if you look at the second picture on the top so the top right you want it to move a little bit past the, the edge so just in case 
um, you haven't set your X, Y, Z zero position correctly, you don't end up with a little nub on the one corner. And this will show that it goes past on both sides. So let's simulate that so to see what it looks like. Uh, here we go. And now it's just going to take off uh, half a millimeter as it goes around. And that is it. You should now be ready to fixture reliably and accurately and repeatedly.